Welcome to Authorized Version Bible Thumper Ministries, dedicated to the gospel of Jesus Christ and preaching and teaching the word of God from the preserved and fallible King James Bible of 1611. The title of this study is Christian Cults. So basically what we're going to be going over in today's study is Christian Cults. Cults of people, group, uh, fellowships of actual believers, and also non-believers, because there are those out there as well, but fellowships of people that begin to act cult-like. They begin to just flat out teach for doctrines, the commandments of men, and whenever somebody has a disagreement with them and they, they leave, they will make them out to be lost. And they will even use the particular scriptures we're about to go over to try to prove that. Go to 1 John chapter 2, beginning in verse 18. Turn in your King James Bible to 1 John chapter 2, beginning in verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. As ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lies of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning, if that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. So you see right there. Again, if and cults will actually use this against brethren. They really will. They will use this and say, if you leave their particular little fellowship, you are lost. And you're a lost devil on top of all that. That's not true. It's simple as that. That is not, not what the scripture is saying at all. Just because you leave someone's fellowship over disagreements does not mean that you're lost. Simple as that. The context is antichrist. And there's several ways a false convert can be an antichrist. They already have the spirit of antichrist. They already have the devil, who is their father. They walk according to the prince of power of the air, as referenced over in Ephesians. But the idea being is that none of them have to do with leaving a group of believers based on a disagreement. Go to 1 John chapter 4, 4 and verse 3. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth, that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard, that should come, and even now already is it in the world. So you see right there, that's the spirit of Antichrist. And the thing is, is that lost people can still make this confession because they believe in a false Jesus. They don't have the right God. They don't have the right Jesus. They believe in a different Jesus, and we'll get more to that in just a second. But the idea being is that people can still make this confession. They can still say those words. They can still say, I so-and-so, believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. They can still say that. And there was a recent controversy of, of, with that with me and a few brethren and everything, and they truly believed that if someone could make that confession, it 100% proved that they were saved beyond a, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Never mind their testimony, never mind what kind of doctrines they believed or whatever. No, if you can make that confession according to them, you are 100% saved. A complete and wicked, lazy looking at scripture. A complete and wicked, lazy um, cross-referencing. I mean, they, they're just, the, the idea being that you would, that somebody would just go to that verse and hinge on it and say, well, it, it, it says it right there. Why don't you do a little, why don't you compare scripture with scripture? Why don't you actually look at what the Bible's saying about this? People can believe in a false Jesus and still make this confession. And on top of all that, if this is true, and it were saying that other, that other way that they were thinking, okay, well, then if somebody couldn't actually actually formulate the words, I so-and-so believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, wouldn't that be what we call a sign? Aren't you dispensational? 
Don't you rightly divide? You know that signs aren't for today. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. What do you do with that? The truth of the matter is, if you're looking at scripture that way, you're a novice. And you don't get it. You need to realize all these things. The truth of the matter is, is that this confession can be made by lost people who have a false Jesus in their minds. It doesn't prove anything. It doesn't prove whether they're saved or lost. That's the fact of the matter. But that was a controversy among me and a few brethren that I don't fellowship with anymore. And I praise the Lord that I don't fellowship with them. And now go to 2 Corinthians 11.4. Second Corinthians eleven four. For if he that com cometh, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if ye re receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted ye might well bear with him. So you see right there, Paul is talking about another Jesus and another gospel. So that's essentially, that's the idea, is that people can believe in a different Jesus. They can believe in a different gospel. They all do it. You know, they all have this false idea of Jesus, some hippie guy that wants to love everybody. That's not who Jesus was at all. Jesus is the Jehovah of the Old Testament. Jesus is God the Father. Jesus is Jehovah saves. He is the same God from the Old Testament that punished the wicked and did everything he, he did back then, all the way through the New Testament being sarcastic and authoritative and still being, being the, the Lord that he is. And then all the way through Revelation, coming back and waging war and killing the wicked and casting him into the lake of fire. He is the same way throughout the whole Bible. He is not some, wick, uh, some little uh, sissy hippie guy that wants to love everybody. That's not the truth. He came to bring a sword, not peace on earth. He came to bring a sword... So that way he could divide safe from loss. He divides people. That's what the gospel does. And that's the, that's the fact of the matter. And there's people out there who have that false idea of him. They even have a false idea of the gospel. They barely understand it. They think that they just still have to do these good things and be a good person. And then they'll go to be with Jesus and all this stuff. They have no idea what's going on. And the saddest part is, is that they don't ever seek it. And they wind up dying and go to hell, going to hell because of it. Because they were just some child that grew up in the church and thought that if they just... If they just uh, did some good things, barely had an understanding, and they never sought to understand because they wanted to love their sin and love the world, that's what happens. So, again, that's the idea is people can have a, a false Jesus and a false gospel. I'm a perfect example of that myself, my own testimony. I, when I was a child, I grew up in very much grounded in the, the faith and everything like that. I grew up with Bible readings and all that stuff. I mean, the whole, the whole thing. I grew up in a Christian household. But then when I grew up and got older, I started seeking after drugs and partying and wanting to be the, with the in crowd and all this stuff. And I started loving my sin and just holding on to my sin. I would fight for my sin. I would fight to be able to go out at night and party and do all kinds of wicked stuff. I would actually fight for it. But then finally reality hit me in the face like a brick. And I, and I was told that I'm going to jail tonight. And I got on my knees that night. I asked the Lord to save me, and I put my faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for my personal sins against him because I knew I was, I, was, I was meant to burn in hell. I knew that I was, I was going to go to hell if I didn't get right right now. So I did. And that's how I came to the Lord. And again, that's, and I, I grew up that, if I had never done that and grew up my whole life just going according to my own lust and everything, I would have died and gone to hell and, and everything. So, again, people have a false idea of Jesus, and they can make all kinds of confessions, confess they believe this, that, and this. doesn't mean anything unless, the, unless they've actually been saved by God. And go to Acts chapter 14 and verse 22, because we're going to see about this continue. We really are. We're going to see about this continuing in the, what it actually means. Because it doesn't mean continuing in a cult. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that just because you leave a group of believers, you're lost and you're a devil and all this stuff. So, Acts 14. 
Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. So they're continuing in the faith. What is that faith? That faith would be the gospel, the pure gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the for the sins of the personal sins of the sinner, repentance towards God and faith to our Lord Jesus Christ. And someone who departs from the gospel is an antichrist. That's what it's talking about. Someone who actually departs from the true gospel, the gospel of grace without works. Repentance, coming to God a sinner and getting saved and putting your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection. If you depart from that, you see someone depart from that, yes, you are an antichrist. You are departing from that from those spiritual things. And I mean, even people who get carnal and say they go back to the world, they a lot of they don't give up on Jesus Christ. They still have that faith in them. I mean, that's, I mean, it's very wicked if a, if a Christian does that, and I believe the Lord will kill you if you do something like that, but the fact of the matter is, is that it's all talking about if you depart from the faith, the pure faith, grace without works, because that's what we have in this current dispensation. Not someone who leaves a group of, of uh, believers, not someone who leaves a fellowship. And anybody who uses that like that and tries to say, oh, they, they left my group, oh, they were not of us, they're, and they did, they, or else they would have no doubt continued with us. Yeah, they're lost, they're a devil. You're a wicked, very satanic person. You may be saved, but you have some serious issues with your spirit. And you, need to get it, you need to get it figured out, and you need to take that to the Lord, and you need to get right with God, because that is very, very sick to do. And to privately interpret scripture and try to use it against somebody who leaves your fellowship over disagreements... That's very, very wicked and very wrong. You should be ashamed of yourself if you're doing that. Colossians 1 and verse 23. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So again, it's continuing in the faith, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Someone who departs from that is departing from us, as in the whole body of Christ. Not just your little uh, fellowship and your little cult. And it is a cult, if you're someone who believes that way. Again, when people actually reject the gospel, that is when they go out from us. The whole body of Christ. And with that being said, that is pretty much the end of this study. So we'll go ahead and get into the closing statements. So closing statements. Be mindful of Christian cults. Please, be mindful of them, spot them, learn how to spot them to the best of your ability. The ways that you can really spot them is, one, they are a respecter of persons. They do not administer judgment accordingly to every person. No, they respect each other's person. They will purposely not rebuke somebody over something, but they'll rebuke somebody else because they're picking and choosing. For I mean, again, I've seen that thing. I've seen one guy over here say, well, I believe Christian, uh, uh, Christmas is a sin and all this stuff, and it's satanic, and no Christian should be celebrating it. But yet he's got a little buddy over here that celebrates it, that he learned from, and he respects very highly, but yet he celebrates it and says it's a Christian liberty, and it is, by the way. But the other guy over here insists that it's not, and he says that that's not true, and he believes it's a very wicked sin, but yet that same guy will not dare to rebuke the other one. He'd rather lick his boots. He'd rather worship the guy, man worship, respecter of persons. What's up with that? That's what you call a Christian cult. I don't care how big the channel is. I don't care how big the ministry is. I don't care how much, how well you know them. If you truly believe something like he does, if you truly believe what like he does, he should be rebuking that guy. But he's not doing it. 
because he was a respecter of persons and he's in a cult. That's the truth. They teach for doctrines the commandments of men. They overlook those things about uh, those things like and respect each other's person. That's how you can really spot them. And don't let them bully you. They are prideful novices. That's the truth. Don't let them try to bully you and say, "Oh, because you you did you left my group, you're you're not saved." And you you you're, you know just throw out your whole testimony and all the you know all the things the Lord has done for your life. We throw all that off. If you leave our our fellowship, you're you're lost. You're a bully and you're a novice. You have no idea what you're talking about, and you are mishandling the scriptures. You are misinterpreting and wrongly dividing, and you will answer for it. And when they say the body of Christ is getting smaller, what that really means is that their cult is getting smaller because people keep figuring them, figuring them out. People keep getting in, in with them and seeing how they actually respect each other's person and they're not doing things the right way and they're, mishand, they're misinterpreting scripture and they're teaching for doctrines of the commandments of men and then they leave and then they get ridiculed and people, you know, people, they get attacked and everything and it's, they're, they're just nothing but a bunch of novice bullies. And it's really, really sad. And then they'll they'll cry and they'll say, Well, the body of Christ is getting so small. It's just getting smaller and smaller. No. Your cult is getting smaller and smaller. The body of Christ may be small. I'll give you that. But your cult is the thing getting smaller and smaller. And if the Holy Spirit is guiding you into all truth, these lazy, bitter, Nasty school children can't say anything about your salvation. The Holy Spirit's guiding you in this book, guiding you into all truth. You're receiving the things of the Spirit. They have no right to say squat about your salvation. And how dare they do it? They wish you were lost. That's the truth. That's the unspoken truth. They wish that you were lost. And that's really, really sick, because that means that they wish that somebody would go to hell. That says there's something wrong with their spirit. There's something wrong with them. Something bitter, something angry, and they will act that way. Guaranteed. When you encounter these people, withdraw yourself from them. Kick up the dust behind your feet and walk away. Because it will get worse as you spend more time around them. And with that being said... That's the end of this study. I pray this is a blessing to you. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you for watching Authorized Version Bible Thumper Ministries. James chapter 4 and verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. The gospel is this. Romans chapter 3 verses 10 to 12. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Friend, you are not a good person. Romans chapter 3 verses 19 to 23. Now we know what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Have you ever lied, cheated, fornicated, or even killed? James 2 verse 10 For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. You have sinned against a perfect, holy God. The punishment for sin is eternal hell. Matthew chapter 5 verses 29 to 30 And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 11 Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, 
but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Do you fear God? Are you sorry for your sins? Are you desperate for salvation? A new life? 2 Corinthians 7.10 For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. The good news. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again the third day for your personal sins against God, so that you can be justified. Romans 3 verse 24 Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 13 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on the Lord, ask for the free gift, and receive the new birth today. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new.